welcome along to obviously Fight Talk and this is Must Watch MMA Fights for November 2017. This is our second edition and we thought why not get Brendan Dorman involved. Sure he's doing nothing else so let's get him on the phone and we have done. So Brendan is in the dark. we got to point this out as well. Brendan is in the dark. He does not know our list. This list was put together by myself and Robert. There's a rule to this list. Only two fights from one card are permitted to make the list. Otherwise, let's be honest, it would have been... Yeah, just watch uh, yeah, the UFC yeah. pay-per-view on 217. Uh, but, Brendan, you're in the dark, so you just, as you said, give to Caesar if you agree and any opinions on the fight. So, example, number five in the must-watch fights for November 2017 is Anderson Silva versus Calvin Gastelum. Robert, why? For me, I think I think Anderson Silva, whenever he fights, is must-watch TV. He's one of the greatest fighters of all time. So I think we need to cherish any Anderson Silva fight. And maybe he's past it. Maybe he is. But I think we need to cherish any Anderson Silva fight when we have him. Because when he goes away, we're going to miss him. With Kelvin Gastelum, I think he's a really, really good prospect. I think he probably goes into this one as favor, which is you know maybe surprising to a few people. But he's a young guy um, fighting at middleweight now. And I actually like him at middleweight. And there's Brendan Norman gone. Brandon, what happened? Brendan just thought I'm having enough of this. Yeah. Gone. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. You, you don't really like this fight, do you? <laughs> You're like, damn, number five? Gas yeah, I, Silva, I I'm out of here. I literally called back within 10 seconds. I could hear you, I, and then it just went blank. Yeah. Anderson yeah. Silva's must see TV, Kelvin Gastelum. Continue. Sorry. Fuck. Yeah, Kelvin Gastelum is a good prospect, and um, I think it's a very competitive fight. I think uh, Kelvin will go in as the favorite. Um, I think it could be a difficult fight for Anderson at his age, but... I think it's a it's a good one. I think the reason why this would sit at number five, as you said, Rob Anderson Silva would be considered by many as a Hall of Famer, one of the Top best three of best all time to ever do ever. it. Uh, Anderson is actually coming out in off the back of a victory over Derek Brunson, who had a pretty impressive victory at the weekend. Close fight. Um, and Gastelum is coming off a defeat to Chris Weidman. So, in a way, this is you know a legend taking on a young lion, if you like. So, you know, this gives Gastelum the opportunity if he beats Anderson Silva. All of a sudden, it's it, you know. Not to disrespect anybody else in the division, but if you beat Anderson Silva, it's going to get noticed. Yeah. So it's a big opportunity for uh, Gastelum here. That's why it sits at number five for me. Brendan, do you agree or disagree with number five? Obviously, you haven't heard the rest of the list, but is, good fight. Is yeah, it? I mean, I don't know the other ones on the list, but as far as it being a great fight, yeah, absolutely. It may be we may be getting close to Anderson swan song, you know. Yeah. And uh, Gastelum is a really interesting kind of styles make fights match up with him. Because he's, he's pretty granite chin, you know. Um, I, I don't know if he'll try to use wrestling. You know, it's a, it's stylistically it's interesting, you know. Um, Weidman looked amazing against Gaslam, but up until that point, he, he was looking pretty amazing against everyone else. So we saw what he did to Uriah Hall, who was kind of Anderson-ish, I guess. I mean, I, I'm giving him too much credit, maybe, definitely. But, uh, yeah, good fight for sure. Um, so that's number five on the list. Moving along swiftly. Number four, we move to Bellator. Um, this is Ryan Bader defending his strap against Linton Vassell. This takes place on the 3rd of November at Bellator 187. I think it's got to get in there. I'll speak up on it because from Bellator's point of view, this is their title. It's a title belt. It's in yeah. the month of November. It makes perfect sense to make it. Bader coming across from the UFC, winning the title. Linton Vassell is a veteran now in the Bellator cage. Ernest earned his title shot after a dominant display against Liam McGarry to get it. Uh, let's be honest, Linton's been on the show a couple of times. We want to see Linton do well. Uh, but this, again, it's a high-caliber uh, title shot and it definitely warranted to make the top five, but is four to the right spot? Yeah, I, me and Noel, we were kind of thinking, is this four or is this five? The, the Anderson and the, the Bader fight kind of were interchanging for a while. But I think for this one, I think the significance mm -hmm. of it, it's a title yeah. fight. Ryan Bader making that big move over to Bellator. His first fight was a bit of a dud. I think everyone can say that. Um, but I think this is an interesting fight because Linton Vassell, for a guy from the UK, has uh, very good wrestling. So I think we're going to see a different Ryan Bader in this one. I don't, see we're gonna, don't think we're going to see a whole lot of wrestling. I think it's going to be a striking match. Um, and again, it's a title fight oh. in Bellator. Bellator are doing some big things. So it's an interesting one. Yeah, um... I don't have a dog in the race. I mean, a friend of the show is a friend of mine, of course. Um, uh, yeah, Bader has been in some great fights, and he's been in some real stinkers, and he's been slaughtered. 
those are like that's his resume right he was rising up and he was doing really well up until rumble just was that massive roadblock interesting fight another stylistic kind of interest you know like as you guys said usually as americans we think as people from the uk as not having much wrestling but he's got good grappling yeah. so it might nullify some of the the uh boringness of um beater potentially right how do you feel at the yeah, moment? How do you feel at the moment with five being Anderson, Gaslam, and four Bader Vassell? I mean, I'm more, I'm more personally interested in Anderson versus. Sure. Uh, cool. I get the title fight thing, but Gaslam Anderson's a more interesting fight for me. You well, know, this is this is why yeah, we exactly do, people is, will talk yeah. about it. Number three, let's move to number three. We are going to UFC Fight Night 120, taking place on the 11th of November and this sees Dustin Poirier taking on Showtime Anthony Pettis I think Brendan would like this one number three Brendan you're nodding happily you agree with that you're looking forward to this fight <laughs> really of course I'm biased <laughs> as shit here yeah by the way yeah I talked to a friend that wants to come on the show on the phone speaking of a, a different thing <laughs> just kidding Anthony Pettis uh, is um, yeah that's my fam yeah so yeah, that's an awesome fight, man. That's an incredible fight. Poirier, Poirier is looking to come back, right, from that kind of awkward fight with Alvarez. Yeah, yeah. And Pettis is coming off an amazing win over Miller. Um, Dustin tends to stand, uh, stand southpaw, and Pettis fights really well against southpaws normally. Nice. Unless their R- name's RDA. Great fight. Unbelievable fight. Yeah, this one, yeah. For, I think for this one, it's significant um, because both guys, I think mm-hmm. for a lot, for a long time, in his, maybe his last two or three fights, people are saying maybe Pettis isn't there. But after that huge win, I think Pettis is back, especially at 155. I don't think he looked great at 145. Mm-hmm. He spoke about that being a difficult cut. Mm-hmm. So I think it's significant because Pettis is back at 55. Maybe he can make a run again. Poirier has always been kind of there. He just hasn't really broke into that top two tree, um, but he can get there. <sighs> Um, and then I just think for style-wise and for how entertaining the fight could be, it has to be on the list. 100%. Number three here, I think this is only number three because what's number two and number one? Yeah. Um, that sounds quite okay. obvious. But <laughs> I, I think uh, like Dustin Poirier, since he moved to 155, <laughs> just looks a lot better. That really caught you, yeah. didn't it? Uh, I think Poirier just at 55 looks great. He looks. Yeah. It's almost like the way Cowboy looks, looked better at 170, but that's been railroaded a little bit recently. But I just, oh, I yeah, I just think that Poirier looks the better fighter here at 55 as he than he did at 45. Yeah, um, and this I just this striking just uh, it's it's a really 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 interesting fight. Like Showtime's striking is phenomenal. So is Pettis. So I'm interested. And you know the whole Connor point to Pettis saying you know if a strong breeze blows it will rock Pettis. Uh, or sorry, um, Poirier. Oh, it, it's, yeah, that's true. You know, it, it, it's interesting because the fight you said that he, he came off with Eddie Alvarez, that was just building to be a fantastic yeah. fight. And the fans, we almost got robbed. Oh. But how they didn't rerun that one back is beyond me. Eddie Alvarez obviously went into the tough house. But, uh, yeah, Anthony Pettis against uh, Dustin Poirier. I think this is a potential. You could see a highlight reel knockout or you could just see pure technique versus technique. And I think it is a beautiful fight. The next one's going to be interesting, I think. Yes. I think the next one's going to be interesting. For me to hear? Yes. For yeah, so okay. here we go. Number two, UFC 217, Madison Square Garden, taking place on the 4th of November. Michael Bisbing versus George St. Pierre. Number two, Brendan. I'm, I'm fucking curious what one is. Um... Uh, I think I know what one might be. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm kind of interested in that fight. <laughs> Would you say oh, you man. have a dog so, in that race? Uh, <laughs> I, I have some weird concerns. I'm sure we'll get there, but yeah. yeah fucking yeah. amazing fight. A, a lot of people aren't into it, whatever, you know. I think it's the like the new generation of fans, but yeah. yeah sure. Incredible fight. Kidding me? Like the guy that reigned for 10 years in the toughest division in the sport for 10 years, yeah. coming back to try to actually kind of deserves that shot in a, in a different way uh, against the, the biggest shit talker in the game right now who's been so good since USADA's come in yeah awesome awesome fight we haven't uh, done our history pre- yeah history. we haven't done our preview for the show just yet but I think it's important to note that who George St. Pierre was I'm not sure the UFC are doing who? a I'm not sure the UFC are doing a, a great job of Ugh. reminding people or at least telling the newer fans how good GSP was or what he meant to the sport 
Um, and then I think you also have to take uh -huh. into account if he does beat Michael Bisping, how big of an accomplishment that is. Or if Michael Bisping beats GSP, how big of an accomplishment that is. I just think for the return of George St. Pierre alone, this definitely should be near the top of the list. We have reasons why it's not number one, and we'll get to that, but mm -hmm. it's an absolutely amazing fight. It's intriguing. We don't know what's going to happen. What's George going to look like? at middleweight, you know, coming back after four years. It's crazy. Um, Michael Bisping, he's, he's had such a great run. What a fight. Uh, I'm not too sure if I'm saying this right. George St. Perrier. Perry, Perrier? I'm not too sure who this guy is. George I'm new to MMA. No, look, George, you are all right, the... Uh, what you said, Rob, makes perfect sense. I think the UFC have fallen down on the promotion of the fight. They're just almost using presumption yeah. that the fans that watch the UFC now watch the UFC when George was dominant. Um, that doesn't seem to be mm -hmm. the case. I was reading an article during the week. I apologize because I can't remember who wrote the article or where I was reading it. But it was saying the so-called casual fans of MMA that were the casual fans when George St. Pierre was the big draw don't watch MMA anymore yeah. so they've drifted away so they don't have them casual fans anymore so the now new <laughs> casual fans don't know who George yeah. St. Pierre is that happens Michael Bisbing um, you know you'd literally watch Michael Bisbing uh, let's say for example like choke a kid out in his gym and get sued for it you'd pay money for that shit you know what I mean but like Bisbing is the absolute uh, he's raining in. I don't know how people aren't excited for this fight this is incredible the reason the reason the reason why I have this number two and it was almost the reason Rob why I didn't have it in the top five imagine that Brandon I this put mad. forward this a, crazy an argument to not have this in the top five and the reason being is because in one year's time one year one year is very short I don't think either of these fighters are active. And that's why I just think there's other fights like we can't say yet because we haven't given away <laughs> number one. We'll come back to it when we give away number one. But there's other fights that I think to the future of MMA are more important. And that was my argument why Bisping St. Pierre shouldn't be on the list. What's your immediate reaction to that, Brendan? Leg kicks. <laughs> No said. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, it was all fair that uh, Brennan was said he'd like kick the shit out of me because he found out I was six foot four and I said he wouldn't touch me. Um, <laughs> it's easily said over Skype call, folks. Um, right, so Bisbing, St. Pierre, uh -huh. number two. Are you disappointed as number two? Um, I don't know what one is yet. Okay, let's not let you wait any longer. Number one, UFC. 217, Madison Square Garden, 4th yeah, of November, know. same thing, number one, Cody Garbrandt Co versus TJ Dillashaw. Yeah, good call. Yeah, that's what I meant by co -main. Yeah. So, <laughs> what's your opinion? I, I get it. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to that just as much. Yeah. I get it. I mean, if not, you know. It's yeah, that they're like there. So we're talking about two guys in their in their prime, yeah. looking like two of the best 135ers ever. Yeah. That have a backstory. I mean, that that fight sells itself on skill, on backstory, drama, stylistically. That's a that's that's as good as it gets yeah. for a matchup. Yeah, pretty, that's amazing. Pre, that's pretty amazing. much amazing. why we put it. That's pretty much why you put it at number one. It's an amazing fight between the two amazing fighters who are at the top of their game pretty much definitely. Um, mm -hmm. definitely there's a story behind it as well which you know a lot yeah. of the time you're not really uh, one to get into the stories but at least for this one it's it's a genuine it's a genuine thing where yeah. you know you understand why both guys are upset about it and you understand why does a does a story mm -hmm. going into it so that's good as well and again Cody Garbrandt coming off one of the best performances you'll ever see against uh, Dominic Cruz oh, um, amazing yeah, and TJ Dillashaw coming back after a very close fight with Dominic, Dominic Cruz. So the winner of this fight could realistically call themselves the best bantamweight of all time, realistically. Yep. So and that's why it makes number one. So the list again, number five, Anderson Silva taking on Kelvin Gastelum. That's on the 25th of November. Number four is Ryan Bader, Linton Vassell, the 3rd of November. What a weekend the fight's coming up. Um, number three is yeah. Dustin Poirier, Anthony Pettis, the 11th of November. Number two, Bisbing St. Pierre. UFC 217 coming up this weekend. And number one, Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw. Obviously, there was rules employed in this 
if we didn't have the rules, we would literally would have said, look at the main card of yeah, UFC. because Joanna, Joanna against Rose, Rose is, an amazing amazing fight. is an incredible fight, and that would have been just as a matter of interest to anybody. That would have been the one that would have got bumped. Biz being Pierre for me, if we didn't get that on, if Rob fought hard for it, if that didn't get on. We would have had Joanna there. Yeah, and, of course, Brendan showing his colors there with uh, Joanna T-shirt. But these are the must-watch MMA fights of November 2017. If you agree, hit like. If you disagree, comment. Don't uh, don't down like. Who down likes a YouTube video? But, yeah, check them out. Must-watch MMA fights for November. <laughs> this was obviously Fight Talks Breakdown, but with Noel O'Keefe, Robert Pallon, Brendan Dorman.